Hey guys, uh, so first off, before I get into the main topic of this video, uh, what you guys are seeing on the screen is just some workout footage from my leg day that I did this week. My quad foot was leg day, so you guys can see the uh, respective exercise order that I did them in and uh, whatnot. But to just jump right into it, the whole purpose of this video is to address a uh, something that I feel like need, just really needs to is the lack of understanding of um, how hypertrophy works and whatnot. So I posed this thought experiment on my story, um, and it'll pop up on the screen right here. Um, if leg press was just as effective as squats for hypertrophy purposes, and I was actually kind of pleasantly surprised to see that it was kind of close, but as I expected, I uh, most of you guys did think that squats were supposedly better than leg press for hypertrophy. And I want to explain why this is simply not the case. And um, so first and foremost, while I'm sure that uh, my answer um, that squats are not necessary to get big legs is going to offend some of the hardcore uh, lifters, um, you know, the really the true reality is that there is no requirement to perform squats, back or front squats, uh, to build big legs or even leg strength for that matter, unless you are an athlete who must perform that movement as a part of your sport. So, for example, power lifters must squat. Well, Olympic lifters usually squat and must front squat to improve to improve their clean recovery. And strongman competitors often have squat events as part of their competition. And if you think about it from a specificity standpoint, this makes complete sense, right? If you must squat as a part of your competition, you have to squat in training. But outside of those two uh, or possibly three sports, nobody has to squat for any reason whatsoever. Uh, furthermore, nobody has to do any movement whatsoever unless it is required by your sport. Powerlifters also have to bench and deadlift, for example. Olympic lifters have to clean and snatch. But nobody else really has to do that. And it makes sense why, you know, when you think about it in that case. So I really want to make it clear that I am not anti-squat by any means. That is not the purpose of this video. Um, I squat personally um, because I am a powerlifter. Um, and also, it can be an excellent movement for some people. However, for some others, it's a complete waste of time in terms of getting bigger and stronger because it completely depends upon how you're built. Uh, the reality is, is that people that usually tend to get a lot out of squatting in terms of leg growth tend to be built in a very specific way. They frequently have shorter femurs and can stay very upright and place tons of tension onto, onto their quads. And this therefore makes it a excellent leg movement for them. But unfortunately, not everyone is built like that. For people who have longer femurs, such as myself, the squat usually looks kind of like a modified good morning. The lifter ends up bent over so that their low back will give out long before their legs really get that training stimulus. Um, and this can be improved somewhat with squats or like with, with squat shoes or with certain modifications and lifting technique. Um, but the reality is, is that people with poor squat mechanics will just simply not get as much out of a barbell back squat as somebody who has really, really good leverages and biomechanics for it. Um, beyond that, just to take a practical example, you can take two, you know, two hypothetical examples. A guy squatting who never adds weight to the bar, well, versus a guy who does leg presses who is cons consistently able to overload and add weight to that exercise. It's pretty clear that if you're able that the leg press guy is going to build bigger legs if it's he can add more weight to the bar or to the exercise over time. Um, the key point I want to illustrate here is that the exercise is not determinant of growth. Exercise exercise selection is not it's just simply not the primary, determinant, the primary determinant of growth, but it's progressive tension overload that is the primary stimulus for, for growth. Exercise selection is purely secondary outside of a given exercise, allowing somebody, somebody to actually be able to apply consistent progressive overload safely and effectively to 
uh, movements. You can build strength or mass with almost any exercise if the loading parameters and progression are there. Um, which isn't to say that exercises don't vary in how well or how poorly they lend themselves to, to progression. Um, and basically what that means, what I mean by that is that if somebody has really horrible mechanics for squatting, they won't be able to add weight as consistently, um, as efficiently, as often, um, or they could just get injured by placing their body in a, you know, in a state that, in a position that they are just simply not well built for, they are not strong in. Um, that makes squatting therefore a poor exercise. Um, however, if in contrast, someone has really good mechanics for squatting, meaning that they could add weight progressively with consistent good form and technique, that will make squatting a good exercise choice for them. Um, so kind of going off of that, if you look at how I structure this leg workout, I do hack squats first before barbell back squat. And the reason for that is because I'm I simply just enjoy the hack squat more. I can overload it more consistently. Um, and then I will do back squat after that since I am a power lifter. And I do still need to apply some specificity to my training since that's the key principle of strength training. Um, or really any program, it must be specific to your goal, I still will incorporate that. But because I have pre fatigued my quads, quote unquote, before I have done a marble back squat, I'm ensuring that my quads are a limiting factor in the movement and not my lower back because I'm the type, type of person who doesn't have very great squat biomechanics. And usually it's going to be my low back that gives out before my legs actually. So what I want you guys to take home from here is that if your goal is just simply to get bigger and stronger, unless you compete in a sport that requires certain movements, you don't have to train that, that movement. Pick a movements that you like, that you can consistently overload, that you can be consistent with. Because if you don't like an exercise and if you don't have to do it, it's not a great, very great exercise for you. There is something to be said about individuality here with exercise selection. Um, if you can feel a better mind muscle connection, a better pump can better progress on it via, you know, actual load on the bar, that progressive tension overload with inappropriate amounts of training volume, then you're golden and there's absolutely no reason for you to change what, what you're doing. So I hope that this video uh, made sense. You guys took something from this. No exercise is necessary for growth. All that is necessary is sufficient amounts of volume, tension, and the ability to overload consistently on that exercise to get bigger and stronger. Um, so if you guys liked the video, make sure to like it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comment down below.